Okay, right. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to my talk and thanks for coming. And again, thanks to the conference for having me. Um, I'd like to talk a bit about the work we've done on homegrown at AHMM. So uh, first, I'll give a brief introduction as to AHMM. We are the UK's third largest architecture firm. Um, we are employee owned, we were founded in 1989. We've got offices between London, Bristol and in Oklahoma in the US. Um, we work across all sorts of sectors and scales and um, we have a fairly high profile. So um, one of the directors, Simon Alford's just been elected um, president of the Royal Institute of British Architects. Um, and we get to work on some great projects kind of as a result of the profile. So uh, just a few images at the bottom here, things like Google and King's Cross or conversion of BBC uh, 1960s studios to um, residential and then finally um, Facebook's new headquarters in King's Cross. As for myself, uh, I'm this paper's author and I was also founded in 1989 and um, I originally worked and trained as an architect and I found kind of the day-to-day -day working wasn't quite right for me but I still love architecture and I really enjoy being around architects and in that environment. So um, my current position is as a sort of self-taught application developer at AHMM and I'm a kind of a general technology R&D specialist. Um, previously, I worked in video games design uh, back in the good old days of Flash, um, but I was actually not on the coding end. I was on everything else kind of uh, design. And, um, I do .NET development, I do web development, and I really enjoy engaging with both the front end and the back end. I enjoy kind of uh, overseeing the whole design process, which I think has got um, quite a few parallels with how we work as architects. Um, I deal a lot in sort of process automation, creating or streamlining new workflows, and I like building new tools to help us design in different ways. Um, I'm a big fan of open source, and I developed the Dynamo Python primer to kind of try and help um, people in AEC take their first steps into text-based programming uh, to do things like automating Revit, pulling data from their models, um, and that's available at this address. Um, I'm active on Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub. On the GitHub, I've got another open source project that's half built currently. Um, I started last year, and it's to help users manage uh, data standards live in their Revit model. Um, so, on to the talk, I guess. Um, I actually gave this title a lot of thought. Um, I wanted to capture our intentions for homegrown in a very clear and concise way. Um, so as architects, every project we deal with is kind of very similar, but also unique in a certain way, kind of two apartment designs are very rarely exactly the same in all details. So um, I'm aware that in our industry, standardization of process is a bit of a luxury um, and we still have the capacity to reinvent the wheel quite a bit from time to time. So um, homegrown, I um, the name of introspective apartment design to introspect, if you kind of break it up, means to look inwards. I wanted us to be able to reuse our existing residential design knowledge. So to kind of look within what we already have as a firm, look inside for a solution. Um, this isn't an especially new idea. I mean, many practices, uh, including ones I've worked at, have developed apartment layout libraries in CAD very often. And as one of the um, reviewers of this paper noted, homegrown is kind of a take on something called case-based design. So um, learning from sort of previous ready-made designs. Um, the name homegrown itself comes from the idea that we develop these spatial configurations and solutions in-house, we develop the tech in-house, and these are AHMM layouts that we're using. Um, but also that the tool literally builds homes for you. So, I mean, I couldn't avoid a bit of cheesy wordplay, sorry. <laughs> Um, I want to speak a bit about our goals um, in designing homegrown. So this is actually a problem that has a very, very long history going back decades. And I would say the benefits of, if you can get this right, are what I call the holy grail of automation within our sector. So you're looking at great increases in speed and productivity, reduced cost for resourcing or putting together bids, and greater control if not complete control over the content that's being created in 3D and the data that is assigned to it. For the architects, the benefits are they get to work on some maybe less repetitive workflows um, and they get to spend more time perhaps on kind of uh, using their kind of real designer's eye, developing quality and making refinements and adjustments rather than um, you know, drawing walls and sort of entering data. 
Homegrown is an attempt to bridge research and practice. So in researching this paper, I've come across a very long history of attempts to solve this problem using things like um, well, there are machine learning, there is uh, genetic algorithms, there's false directed graphs, there's almost every approach I can think of. I've seen uh, Bayesian networks and so forth. Um, I wanted, I noticed in a lot of the papers, there was, and even in some of the kind of grander reviews of dozens of papers, um, a point was commonly made that actually there's a struggle to bridge a research paper and the tool actually being picked up and used um, by the practitioners in practice. So I wanted to kind of jump over that. Um, I'm an architect, I've worked on apartment designs and kind of I feel I understand us and I feel I understand kind of the problems that we face and the ways that we work. So we wanted to build a tool that suited exactly how architects already work. We're not looking to kind of disrupt the way that they work. We're looking to kind of enhance and build upon that. And um, importantly, to keep architects in their train of thought. So I know that we're constantly balancing about 10 different things in our heads at once, one of them being spatial layout. And so tool UX design is very, very vital. I think one of the um, innovations kind of we've tried to build upon really is uh, UX design, keeping architects in the train of thought, taking them away for one or two seconds to look at some apartment layouts. And it wasn't meant to do absolutely everything. Uh, this still keeps the designer in the mix. It's more of an attempt to do 90% of the work or 90% of the apartments we might kind of be tasked with laying out. 80% for 80%, depending on uh, your opinions, I suppose. Now I'd like to talk about um, our process and walk you through our thinking while we develop this. So in the first instance, when before we've designed the tool, is we need to understand how architects design and judge apartment layouts, you know, what's considered good, what's considered bad. And I had to go about um, interviewing architects, project leads and associates who work on these kind of early stage designs and know kind of what's most important when kind of rating whether they're successful or not. Um, from having my architect hat on, I also had to put my software engineer hat on and uh, ascertain which factors I knew were important and split those out from ones that I knew we might not be able to get from a bare bones empty Revit file, being, Revit being the application we were using. I know things like uh, Project North is very important, understanding where you know north or south sudden um, light is coming from but there are, is not a standard way to set that up in Revit there are a few ways it can be done so for instance I couldn't take that into account I couldn't rely on that um, from that I derived 11 features that I thought were both uh, very important when um, understanding spaces and sort of suitability of a layout to a space and I knew I could get via Revit's API I collected um, together a large data set of apartments from London projects and I wrote automated processes to save and serialize that data to um, a local SQL database and I manually had to go through and standardize content and data things like you know the kind of furniture being used the kind of walls being used uh, and so forth and so those all live together in kind of one big file full of apartment layouts um, I then built uh, an apartment recommendation algorithm based on these uh, 11 features. So it's designed to be weighted, but initially I set all the weights to be completely equal. Um, I'll come back to that uh, later in the presentation. Technologically homegrown, I built into Revit. Um, I built a lot of applied design tools for architects in Revit. So this was no different. Um, I used C sharp.net. I used um, a Windows Presentation Foundation user interface to kind of keep things very clean and modern. Um, and uh, the way an architect might use this tool is they click a Revit um, button in the ribbon of the user interface to launch Homegrown. So I've got a little icon of develop there. Um, and they simply have to do two clicks. So it's a very streamlined um, user experience. They have to click once uh, inside a bound target space to indicate the space that's sort of the target space that we're looking to analyze. And they click another time to indicate the rough entrance location of the apartment. This uh, is then enough. We can extract all these kind of features data from uh, the target space and we connect to the practice wide SQL database to begin the work of filtering through the apartments. So uh, we retrieve the apartment data. We initially um, filter it to remove irrelevant apartments. So things that are far too large, far too small. Um, we then take all the remaining apartments and we um, run some comparison analysis across those 11 features. Um, I'm using similarity measurements that I've uh, devised myself. Each one is kind of measured between zero and one, so they're all normalized. 
Um, and apartments that score low on overall similarity, again, that's rated between zero and one, um, get filtered out. And so the remaining apartments are presented to the user sorted by that similarity score, but they just convert it into a match percentage for, uh, I guess, user friendliness reasons. And uh, it's very much, it's my belief that architects uh, design with kind of a honed intuition. So um, after the architects uh, construct the apartment, when I was training this, they would be presented with a, um, a scoring dialogue. And the dialogue was designed to elicit a semi-unconscious response. So I wanted them thinking along lines of gut feeling. And I preferred this over a numerical approach um, rather than rating them out of 10 or using stars or anything. I wanted them to kind of just use the sliders to give me a rough indication answering general questions about the success of the reconstruction. Um, I used 13 architects to rate 163 apartments. The data was saved in a CSV format. So um, of the reconstructed apartment, I can get the similarity uh, scores for each of the features. And I get an overall total score based on the rating kind of given using the sliders. From that, I can reverse engineer the ideal feature weightings. Um, I used two regression techniques. I used gradient boosting regression and random forest regression just for um, to kind of double check what I was doing really. And of the 11 features, um, they wound up converging or pretty much converging to very, very similar feature weights over training with the 160 apartments. So I was quite happy that the feature weights actually agree very closely with um, professional experience and what I expected might be some of the most important features. In terms of the challenges I faced, um, there was a big challenge in understanding how to consistently lay out a sensible grid upon apartment geometry. So a very common approach used is the minimum bounding box approach. Um, I actually found this to be unintuitive for certain kinds of geometry. It does find the minimum bounding box, but I wanted more of a layout grid that would sort of uh, be laid out sensibly upon a space, uh, sensibly, I guess, being somewhat subjective. But um, I wind up devising my own approach called most popular vector or dominant vector. And uh, this might not be entirely original. It's just what I kind of came up with, where I kind of group the edges of an apartment space according to their orientation. And the group that has the longest total length uh, became the most important or dominant vector. Um, this formed the basis for my layout grid. I've not walked through the entire technique for devising the grid, but this uh, dominant vector formed the basis for being able to lay out a grid consistently on geometry, regardless of how that's been rotated, and always giving me a somewhat sensible looking and intuitive grid. The grid has the benefits that I can um, uh, relate any point in an apartment space to just a pair of floating point numbers which allows for very easy storage, retrieval, and comparison uh, numerically of where things lie in space. And it serves as a normalized way to refer to the same point between different grids. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 will relate me the center point of any grid, regardless of how it's oriented. Another um, um, challenge I faced was to understanding how to normalize a similarity score from continuous value variables. So many of the measurements I'm taking from the apartments are continuous value, such as the overall area. I wanted to understand how to generate a similarity score between zero and one between say two slightly large apartments that might be one bed apartments at 52 and 53 and a half square meters. I wanted the data to give me the answer and I wanted it to be continuously calculated as I receive new data. So this is a statistical analysis challenge. And again, I don't know whether it's the ideal technique. I had to come up with this kind of on my own because I'm not uh, necessarily trained in statistics. Um, I could understand that most of the data coming to me came in the form of a Gaussian distribution. That's not always the case. I think apartment layouts, actually apartment sizes might come in more of a beta distribution. But Gaussian was a good enough assumption. And I um, know that uh, from the mean uh, with a Gaussian distribution, you're looking at plus or minus three standard deviations to capture over 99% of the data. So, this forms a range that I would uh, call zero and one. And then I could uh, see relatively where two points would sit in space to understand the difference and then also the similarity between them numerically. Finally, just reconstructing apartments in situ um, was a lot of an API challenge, really. Um, it was quite hard work for three or four weeks, understanding there's many different kinds of content in Revit I had to cater for, from family instances to built-in types such as walls, um, content which hosts elements, elements which are hosted in content, things that are defined by points and things that are defined by lines. 
and I had to take into account the flipping, mirroring, and rotation of the elements and the flipping, mirroring, and rotation of the source and target apartments. Homegrown is able to reconstruct at any angle flipping or mirroring. It recognizes similarity um, entirely the same regardless. So the question I posed in my paper is, can we use heuristic techniques to develop new residential layouts rather than generating them from first principles? Homegrown is being used on several early stage residential projects at AHMM, which is a sign of success for me. Um, the use of feedback has been very positive and I'm getting a lot of requests right now to develop new functionality. The feature weights, like I said, from the regression techniques agree with what we would have expected to have seen. So that is um, very uplifting. And finally, the response on social media has been um, extremely encouraging. Um, I'm very excited by that. And homegrown has the capacity to be taken much further. I actually think it's only about half done. We can extend the original apartment library uh, to have new kinds, shapes, sizes of apartments. Um, but we can also look at including uh, early stage data relating to specification classification, acoustics, uh, fire. Um, we can even begin to look at automating things like regulation. This one, it's a bedroom, knows that it's a bedroom. It knows, for instance, the minimum size that it would need to be. The apartment knows it's two bed. It knows the minimum size that it would need to have, the number of sofa spaces, et cetera. So I'm looking forward to developing homegrown far more in the future. And uh, that's it. Thank you for coming to my talk. <laughs>